so david consults with all the leaders and all the israelites he calls literally he calls the entire country to himself and he says hey this is what i'm thinking what do you think about it and yet david you know he never asked god he never asked god he asked everybody but he never asked god and that was the mistake he made and and he takes this uh, gang of you know levites and the priests with him and now where is he going he is going time for movers and packers time to take the god box from the house of who abinadab and now they want to bring the god box back to jerusalem okay that was the main city david city that was the main city so so now uh, the the movers are, and packers are gone you know then they are gone and they have they the king has consulted everybody and yet the king missed consulting the king of kings and and it is so important you know sometimes we look at big churches and we look at the crowds and then we are like wow i wish you know our church was like this but you see crowds or numbers is not the evidence of the presence of god it is not the evidence david had the entire country with him he had everybody and yet he was not doing things in consultation with god and he reaches there and guess what they put this god box on the cart oops from where did you get this idea the god box was supposed to be carried on the shoulders of the levites right it was supposed to be carried on the shoulders of the levites so david where did you get this idea you know from where they got this idea they saw the philistines do it remember philistines they put the ark on the cart and they send it away and and so now david is saying that okay maybe that is the best movers and packers that's the best way to do it they put this god box they put they take the presence of god so lightly they put it on that cart and now they are taking it to jerusalem and guess what happens you all know the story right the oxen trips and the god box is about to fall and uza he goes and he steadies the ark and boom the fire of god consumes uza that very moment that very moment if you read the original hebrew translation it literally means that the fire of god exploded it exploded in that man it was it was just you know he just got burnt alive usa was consumed by the fire of god and and so sad that he lay down next to the god box he died before the ark of god when david saw this he was very upset he was filled with anger and when when we read this verse we know we know the fact that you know that was not the right way of doing things but many times we also read this verse and we are like god do you really did you really have to do that and, and this time when i was reading this verse i like god i know i know i know that he should have handled the ark in a better way i know that not the right way god was there still a need to consume this man at that moment and you know what god said he took me to the scripture says, ezekiel 33:11 and this is what god replied to me i said god was there a need was there a need you was there a better way was was there still a need and this is what god replied he said i take no pleasure 
in the death of wicked people i want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live and i read this like oh my god oh my god we have completely missed the heart of god we have completely missed the heart of this good good god and i want to linger on this topic on this point for some time because i want to deal with some lies about death okay that i believe will set you free for a lifetime listen to me god so loved the world that he gave his son when we were yet in our sin when we yet did not know god god so loved us that he gave his son god is he says that i have come to give you life i have come to give you life in abundance he is the giver of life death does not come from god the bible says that the thief that is the devil comes to steal kill and destroy it was never the plan of god to strike uzza down god says i take no pleasure in this i take if your heart is breaking you know how much my heart is breaking god is saying when i see uzza die because i take no pleasure in the death of wicked people and this man was not even a philistine he was an israelite and god is saying i forget my people i don't like it when wicked people die because i am a god who is patient i want them to turn away from their wicked ways no we look at one verse and we run with it and we forget that there are 20 other verses that are telling you that i am a god who is slow to anger i am a god who is merciful slow to anger abounding in love my compassion never fails my mercies are new every morning i am slow to anger this is not an angry god you see the god box causing destruction but this is not the character of your god your god is loving your god is patient forget destroying his own people he's saying i don't like it when the wicked die you know the story of jonah and god sent him to nineveh nineveh was absolutely a demonic and an evil city and the people there from the youngest to the oldest they they were in in you know blatant sin they were doing demonic things really really bad things and yet the moment you know god god wanted to destroy the evil god wanted to destroy the wickedness in that city he he had to do it to preserve his people and yet the bible says that when those guys repented god changed his heart isn't that what happened does it not show you the goodness of god there was you know one time a king hezekiah who who was not a good king and and the man of god the prophet of god comes to him and tells him that you pack up your bag you are surely going to die and the bible says that hezekiah wept and he prayed to god and even before this prophet of god could leave the palace of hezekiah god told him go back go back and tell him that he will live so this is your god this is your god he is not the one who is bringing death so stop making the statements where you say that oh if it is god's will for me to live then i will live for these many years you know we we know there is a scripture in the bible Uh, I think it is Job 14:5 which says that a person's days are determined. That means we we say that God knows the number of our days when we are going to die. God knows. Yes, God knows. But remember what I told you last time? God does everything 
in consultation with you he is in the new covenant a partnership god so whatever happens in your life you know god is not responsible for it god is not responsible for death so stop making these statements where you're saying that when you look at somebody die and you say god took him away no god does not take away life god is not behind it god is a good god he is a giver of life i i have lost count of how many times i have been to funerals where people stand and they say this famous verse psalms 116 verse 15 precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his saints do you know what is the origin of this word precious do you know what is the real meaning the hebrew meaning of this word precious from which word it, it has originated it has come from a word called yakar and the meaning that is implied when 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 it is written here precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his saints the meaning of precious is costly costly that means every time a child of god dies god stands there at the funeral and his heart is breaking because he is saying that oh my god this was costly this was costly because this you, you got to understand this you don't be in a hurry to reach heaven okay because you don't have a job there the only thing you'll be doing there is praising and worshiping god the place where you have a job and an assignment is on the earth every one of you every single one of you has a call of god upon your life and god wants you to live and fulfill that call upon your life and that's why when your life is cut off prematurely okay i don't care you may be 70 80 90 god doesn't need you up so when 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 you see this verse precious in the sight of the lord is that it's not that god is waiting when you will come up no he would rather see you fulfill your calling down because you have a call to finish and that's why every time there is a funeral god has to come and he has to stand and he has to weep there and he has to say that this was a costly calling i lost this was a costly this child this daughter if only she knew who she had with her she would have bought life to so many others who were still in the darkness that was a costly calling i lost so remember death and destruction is not from god so so who holds the power of death who holds it it is very very evident you open your bibles to the book of proverbs 18 verse 21 very famous verse and yet i don't know how we miss it death and life is in the power of your tongue is it written there death and life is in god's hand no death and life is in your hands where it is in the power of your tongue so next time when you use your tongue and say words of unbelief when you use your tongue and say oh i am fed up of this life it's not working out for me oh i would rather be with god precious in in, in his sight is my death oh heaven is so beautiful i want to be there uh, this uh, this is too much you know you are inviting death upon your life 
did it tear the lies from your head did it tear yeah it is supposed to go so you take guard of your tongue god is not the one who's taking away <laughs> your life so god he says that i give you choice choose look at what he says in deuteronomy 30 i'm reading from verse 15 onwards see i have set before you today life and good death and evil in that i command you today to love the lord your god to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and the lord your god will bless you in the land which you go to possess but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them i announce to you today that you will surely perish you and i have the choice okay you and i have the choice god is saying that hey listen i came to give you life and i'm offering these two platters before you on one hand it is my ways and it is my goodness on the other hand it is you running behind things that take you away from me and this way you go you will meet me faster and this way you go you will have life you will be blessed your generations will be blessed and god is saying that the choice is yours So never ever blame God for wrong things that happen in your life. You need to check. You and I need to check what are we declaring? What are we confessing? Are we confessing? Is our heart imprinted with the word of God so deeply and so intimately that we are confessing the word of God? Or is there offense in our heart? Is there unbelief in our heart? 